Check-ins in one hour. Yes, sir. Finally checking in. It's crazy. First time in five years. No. I think once I get there, it's gonna hit me a little bit more. I feel really good this morning, though. Body feels good. Mentally, I feel pretty good. He's uh, <laughs> anxious to get on that stage, do the press conference. The first, we're gonna stop at Wawa. Alex, we're only here because of you, Top Lin. You didn't. If you didn't endorse Wawa as well as you do, they better be paying you, bro, because I'm only here because I see you posting about it. So let's see what all the hype is about this coffee and see if it's better than Starbucks. It's pretty good. <laughs> Top one, good suggestion. I'm pretty picky too. I only usually eat Star uh, drink Starbucks coffee. See you. Hey brother, I was like, damn, I, I saw your video, like what you what you went through to, to get here and all that and then what it took. I was like, oh, you did. So we're just chilling right now, waiting to get in for the other group to come out and check in so the men's people go in and check in. We got a shave later. I'm like putting it off. It's like my least favorite part of prep is shaving my body. I used to do it all the time. I got, like, I've been doing it first since I was like 17, so I'm like, yeah. All the babies are here. Yeah, me, my football. That is insane. How are you? Five years later, finally sharing the stage again, bro. You know what Phenomenal. Like, it's really good. Yeah, 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 it's Alright, let's go. 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 Alright, let's 187, but I weighed uh, 192.4 on their scale. So I'm a little a little overweight for next year, which is fine. They aren't going to count it this year, but we're going to bring it even a little smaller next year. We got to get you to check in for a press conference. This is my wife. Oh, hello. This is Jesse. I'll give you a hug. Jesse, good to meet you. Hey, little one. Say hi. Hello. Give him a high five. He's like the most popular guy on YouTube. <laughs> You guys know Jesse James West? Oh, Dylan, Dylan, Dylan McKinnon just called me about it. Who did? Dylan McKinnon. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They all want another, another video with you. That's fine. You gotta do it. Let's go, baby. Our next competitor, the only four time champion of the men's physique Olympia title, is making his first appearance. The Olympia stage since 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, he is back. Please welcome the comeback kid from the United States, Jenny Buendia. Hey, Bob, I, I got a question for uh, Jeremy Buendia. Ah, here we go. Uh, Sam, Jeremy, you're trying to do something that some legendary bodybuilders have uh, tried and failed. Uh, the comeback of Kevin Lavroni, Flex Wheeler, 
oh. several other bodybuilders coming back after some time off didn't materialize in terms of winning. Maybe the journey was something that they were trying to accomplish. Where are you at and how are you, you, you dealing with that mentally coming back after that much time off? I feel I'm in the best spot I've been in, in my entire life right now. I think a lot of people forget that I was in my early 20s when I won my first Olympia. When I lost my Olympia title, I was only 27 years old. And at that point in time in my life, I was still trying to figure out who I was and, you know, what my role was in this life and my purpose. And, you know, after I lost my title, I kind of lost my way for a while, made some poor choices and um, spiraled out for a little while. And um, I found, found myself in a kind of a slump in a, in a hole for a couple of years that, um, you know, it was very hard for me to get out of. And there's a reason why I didn't make my way back to this stage because physically I've been dealing with injuries, but also the mental aspect of things of dealing with my mental health and trying to be a better person. And um, not only... Yeah. You know, a few years ago, I got married and had a daughter. And, um, you know, I'm 33 years old as as of last week, and when you become a man, you have to start to take a look in the mirror and figure out what you want for yourself and your future. And when my daughter was born, I wasn't the man that I, I needed to be for my family. And um, those are some of the things that opened my eyes to the reality of where I was at in my life and what I had to do in order to be the man I needed to be. And one of the biggest things that helped bring me around and get me out of that hole was reestablishing my relationship and my faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And... <clears throat> Over this past year and going through this prep the past nine months, you know, it's been a, a series of obstacles and hurdles and a mental challenge because at the beginning of this prep, I didn't believe I can do it. You know, I physically, my body was, has been through a lot. Mentally, I wasn't in a good space. And from what everybody was telling me that the division had outgrown me. And I had been told that I wasn't wanted back. And when you're getting told something over and over again, you start to believe it. And when you start to believe what other people will put in your head, you start to lose sight of what your true self is. And that's something that over this prep, I've been able to, you know, come into realization of what my purpose is here. You know, why am I coming back? What are the things I'm trying to learn and gain from this prep? And, you know, what else I can do to, you know, serve this world in a way that we're meant to, or we're meant to, you know, we have a purpose on this earth. And as everybody's seen the way our world is nowadays, good has to be put out there. And that's something I've been striving to do is, you know, set a good example and joke to people through my actions, not my words of what it is to make changes in your life. And that if you are going through a hard time in life and you're feeling, you're finding yourself in a slump that you can't pull yourself out of, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay there. There is opportunities, there is a redeemer, and there's a way of finding your way back out. And that's something that I've been able to do these past several months is been able to rebuild myself from the inside out. And mentally, I'm the strongest I've ever been. And on Saturday, you're going to see me physically the strongest I've ever been. Well, Jeremy, uh, welcome back to the Olympia stage, brothers. Yes. Great to have you back here. And you look great from all the pictures and video that I've seen. Adding to all that stress you were saying, the body wasn't responding, you had things going on, you got a family now. And then this guy blocks you on social media, just to, just to put the dagger in there. He unblocked me. Okay, all right, that's good. That's... The Olympia weekend has officially begun, folks. That was good, that was exciting, it was fun. It's nice to finally have my, the mic back in my hand in front of everybody. How long did I talk for? A couple minutes? Long yeah, long long. We're gonna go train, I'm gonna go back to the course for the night. I'm gonna dress up differently and then I'm gonna bring my four wheels to the Olympians.
day and a half, thousand carbs, day and a half. Not even 36 hours. 3,000 carbs. Yesterday morning till uh, two o'clock. I have to do that clean burger meal. I know. Potato. Okay. I might have to do a burger and fries again tonight. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Twist my arm, Marty. seven meals they had to change plans my body burned through nearly 750 grams of carbs yesterday and I woke up only a pound over what I was and then I went to the bathroom pretty good today sweated a ton even when I was eating my first meal my body was just pouring sweat out we wouldn't worked out push more water out I wasn't as full as I need to be so we're gonna eat up some more today I don't know if I talked about this on camera yet but when I was at check-ins I was very curious about my height either they're gonna measure me at five seven and under or five eight and under and there's a big discrepancy between the two if you were five seven and under you have to weigh 182 pounds and under if you're five eight and under you can weigh 187 and under they hided me at five foot seven so that would have made me 182 I made them rehight me because I know I'm taller than 5'7. So I rehighted it. It was a little over 5'7. So that bumped me up to that 187 cap. I weighed in at 192.6, I believe, today. So that means I'm like five pounds over my weight cap. Granted, I did carb up yesterday. I am up. I'll be able to make that 187 for next year. But I'm right there. Brandon only weighed in at 193. So he's only like 0.3 pounds heavier than me. And he would hide it about a half inch taller than me. So we had the same weight cap at 187. As far as everything is gonna be a size game, which I thought it was gonna be most of this time too. I thought it was gonna be undersized. I don't think that's gonna be the case at all. Now all we gotta do is get full and then push the water out. And if we're able to do that successfully, I think it's gonna be a winning package. So we gotta keep eating. I like how you spoke there. I appreciate it. You're good. Hi, how are you? You met the wife before? Yes, yes, I did. Hi. How are you? Yes. Start seeing those things are falling apart on you. If you start walking the way God wants you to walk, He's going to elevate every part of your life in every single way. You're going to be your best version of yourself if you let God drive your heart. Yeah. Thank you.
Hey, it's fast so good. So, but I eat big, you know? King of diet right here. <laughs> Mayo <Pigs. day> first. <laughs> hey, take a feature. All right, you guys. <laughs> it's uh, 11.45 right now. I've been up since about 5.15. That's when my day started. And it's been nonstop ever since I woke up. Check-ins and the press conference, and then we went to the gym, and then running around back and forth. We're staying like 40 minutes away from the venue, so driving back and forth, and then going back to meet the Olympians. And I, like, now that I'm having a chance to unwind after my last meal, which I did seven meals a day, that wasn't planned. And I ate carbs every meal, that also wasn't planned. But we were, <laughs> well, on my feet all day long, just burning, burning, burning. So if I would have, thought about my perfect day like a week or two ago about how this could have went. It went that way. You know, just from everything, the, the the support from the fans, my family, the fellow competitors, the judges, the people that are running the Olympia, you know, it, it was just, it was so welcoming and everybody seems so happy that I'm back. And it, that means a lot because it took a lot to get back to this point where people wanted me back. And you know, for a lot of years, it, it ate at me the fact that the industry didn't want me because of what I had allowed to happen. And the fact that, you know, it's a, it's a blank slate now and people are wanting to see more of what I have to offer this time around. It's just really exciting. And, and to know that I'm in a place now in my life where like what I'm gonna be doing moving forward, I know is gonna be good. And um, I think a lot of people see that. I don't know if you guys saw the press conference. Or I didn't really have anything planned on what I was going to talk about. I just kind of like spoke about my experiences and what I've been through and, you know, let whatever I need to say flow from the heart and said everything that I, that needed to be said and it motivated and inspired a lot of people. And that's ultimately what my purpose is, is to help people. And that's, I think, everybody's purpose should be in this, pl um, in this life is to to serve others and with the platform that I've been given, you know, I have an opportunity to do that through bodybuilding. I'm not gonna let it go to waste. And I was able to fulfill my purpose to the press conference and to be able to see that immediate response afterwards at the Meet the Olympians, like having people come up to me. I was getting ready to do the interview for the live pay-per-view and this lady came up to me and she had to be in her maybe mid fifties. And she was like already tearing up when she walked up to me and she said, hey, I, you know, I follow you. Uh, my son's really into the men's physique. But I was at the press conference and what you said really touched me. She said that she's going through cancer and she's going to her fourth surgery like later on this month. And she's been struggling with it and just been feeling weak and hopeless. And, you know, she said what I said during my uh, speech at the press conference, inspired her and gave her some hope. And um, she asked for a hug and, you know, I, I felt her, you know, I felt her, her struggle and I felt, <clears throat> it felt empathy for her. So, you know, I hugged her and I, I hugged this random lady for like probably 15, 20 seconds. And I just told her, you know, when you're at your lowest, there's, we have somewhere to draw our strength from and to really draw our strength from prayer and from Christ. And if she's able to do that, he'll get her through it. There's, there's no better where, no better place to draw your strength from than from the ultimate place, the ultimate source, the ultimate one. And, you know, that moment right there just like kind of solidified what God's been telling me this whole prep of what your mission and what your purpose is. It's for moments like that. And then also this lady, she had like three or four kids she came out to the booth and she was like, you know, our world is in need of a lot of, is in need of some role models, you know what? And it's, it's, it's true. I mean, whatever's looked up to nowadays in like pop culture and everything, it, it's, it's not good. And we all know that it's right in front of our faces. and. The you know, lady was like, you know, we need positive influences. And she was like, what well, you said at the press conference today, like my kid, all my kids were there at the press conference and they were able to walk out of there with something that they're going to be able to take away for the rest of their life. And she was like, I really appreciated that. And then she asked me to say something on camera for her kids. So I said a little something and the basis of it is basically 
what I've come to realize in my own life during this prep is don't live your life underneath your potential because it's going to eat at you. And you're going to feel so much pain, so much more pain if you live your life below your potential because you're going to have so much regret. Go to bed every single night knowing that you didn't do your best and that's going to slowly eat at you. It might not bother you the first few days, but that's just going to tear away at your character. And the pain you're going to feel from that is going to be far worse than any pain you got to go through in order to try to experience success. We're always trying to be better in life, and that's just my best advice for you guys. <laughs> Huge tangent, right? Yeah, we're still at Olympia. <laughs> but, you know, that's, you know, that, 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 that it all ties together, you know? Like, winning Olympia and being here is very important to me, but seeing all the other stuff that's come along with it and seeing the amount of people that came out to support me and the amount of people that are happy to hear what I have to say or are responding to it, that is invaluable like there's you can't put a price on that you can't put anything on that that's something that makes me go to bed at night feeling good and um that's about it you guys today was an amazing day tomorrow we are one day away from the olympia stage i'm um, feeling more confident than ever and um we'll find out on saturday so i hope you guys are enjoying this week as much as i am hope you've been enjoying this prep as much as i have and uh, hopefully on Saturday, we will be celebrating big. We'll be celebrating regardless, but we'll be celebrating big with Olympia win. See you guys next time.